Hi, everyone. First up, I have a story from Amy in Oklahoma. She and her dog, Buddy, came face to face with a massive, nightmarish creature straight from the deepest, most primal realms of horror. So be sure that you can steal your nerves and she'll walk you through the grim, disturbing details of the horrific day she came face to face with, the creature from hell. It was a Saturday in the middle of October, and the weather was perfect for hiking here in Oklahoma, sunny with temperatures in the 60s. I decided to take my dog Buddy, a five-year-old black lab mix, over to Roman Nose State Park for the afternoon. We'd been cooped up too much lately and could both use some exercise. I packed a day pack with snacks, water for me and Buddy, and a small first aid kit just in case. We headed out around noon and hit the trails at the park around 12.30 p.m. The leaves were just starting to change colors, oranges, reds, and yellows mixing with the greens. A light breeze made it feel crisp and fresh outdoors. For the first couple hours, it was just a normal relaxing hike. Buddy would chase squirrels and rabbits while I took in the scenery and fresh air. Since we were the only ones on that particular trail section, I didn't have Buddy on the leash and just let him roam freely while I kept an eye on him. Around 2.45 p.m., we came around a bend in the trail and froze. Up ahead, maybe 75 feet away, was something on the trail. At first, I honestly thought it was a homeless person crouched down eating, but it didn't look quite right. As we got a little closer, maybe 50 to 60 feet away, the thing turned and I saw it was definitely not human. It was massive, easily seven feet tall if it was standing upright a grayish-brown color with a ton of hair or fur covering its body. Its overall shape was kind of human-like with two arms, two legs, a head, and torso. But the arms and legs were way too big and muscular for a person. And instead of hands, it had these huge claws or paws. The creature was hunched over and looked to be eating something, making these loud, grunting, smacking noises. Honestly, it sounded like a dog ripping apart a greasy cheeseburger. It definitely wasn't eating something plant-based, if you know what I mean. That's when Buddy saw it and started barking like crazy. I tried to shush him, but it was too late. The thing's head whipped around and locked eyes with me from maybe 50 feet away. Its eyes were this bright, burning red color that almost seemed to glow, and centered in this snarling mouth were these wicked, sharp teeth, like something you'd see on a saber-toothed tiger in those prehistoric animal exhibits. The creature let out this deafening roar that I literally felt vibrate in my ribcage. I remember whipping my head back from the force of the roar hitting me. Buddy's hackles were up, and he was going absolutely bonkers barking at the top of his lungs. Panicked, I turned around to get the hell out of there, desperately pulling Buddy by the collar since he wanted to charge towards the thing like an idiot. As we rushed away as fast as we could, I could hear loud crashing and smashing sounds behind us, like trees and bushes being shoved out of the way, and the sounds seemed to be getting closer, following us down the trail back the way we came. My mind was just on getting us out of there safely, but part of me couldn't believe this was actually happening and wondered if I was dreaming or something. Those sounds crashing through the woods sent chills down my spine, and I just kept thinking, don't look back, don't look back. We finally burst out onto the parking lot at the trailhead. I shoved Buddy into the back seat, jumped in the driver's seat and peeled out. My tires were squealing as I floored it, heading towards the park exit as fast as I could while staying on the road. I didn't stop driving or let off the gas until we hit the highway and I felt safe. A few weeks after the encounter, I went back during the day and drove around the park to see if I could find any evidence of the creature. I spotted some large footprints and disturbed brush along the trail where the thing was, but nothing conclusive. The park rangers just blamed it on a bear when I asked, but these tracks seemed way too large and structured for a bear. At night, I've heard strange howling and roaring sounds echoing out from the forest surrounding the park when I'm outside my house. They don't sound like anything I've heard before. Not coyotes, wolves, or any known animal. Could it be the same creature? Or am I just letting my imagination get the best of me after being spooked 
At the very- A couple times I've woken up in the middle of the night from noises outside, feeling unsettled like something is watching me. But whenever I look out the windows, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, just regular backyard critters. Part of me wants to go back to that trail one day, set up game cams and try to find proof of whatever I saw, maybe capture it on video. But then the other part of me thinks that's a terrible idea and I should just leave it alone. If it's real, who knows how aggressive or territorial it could be. I don't want to risk endangering myself or anyone else. So for now, I'm just left with the questions and uncertainty. Was it real? A coordinated prank? My mind playing tricks? Or could there actually be an undiscovered species of animal lurking in those parks and forests? I don't have any concrete answers. All I know is what I saw, or thought I saw, that day on the trail, and what I felt, raw, primal fear, the likes of which I've never experienced before or since. Maybe one day I'll go back and find out the truth, or maybe it's one of those mysteries that's better left unsolved. Every summer, for as long as I can remember, my buddies and I make the trip up north to do some fishing and camping in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's about a five-hour drive from the Detroit suburbs where we grew up, but it's absolutely worth it to get away from the city and spend some quality time out in those beautiful forests and lakes. This one particular year, I was running a little late getting on the road after work on Thursday evening. Rob and Jir had already left ahead of me earlier that afternoon to get to our usual campsite in the Hiawatha National Forest and get things set up. I finally hit I-75 north around 7 p.m. after crawling through rush hour traffic out of Detroit. A few hours into the drive, I could feel my bladder really starting to fill up. I had chugged a large soda before leaving and didn't want to make any unnecessary stops that would make me even later arriving at the campsite than I already was. So I tried to hold it as long as possible. By the time I reached Gaylord, which is just about smack dab in the middle of the Lower Peninsula, I absolutely had to pull over and take a leak. I really didn't want to stop at a gas station or anything, so when the next exit came up, I pulled off onto one of those old two-lane roads that cuts through the thick forest up here. I drove about a half mile or so down the road until I found a deserted pull-off on the shoulder where the trees opened up a little bit. As soon as I put the car in park, I hopped out and walked a few yards into the woods to find a decent tree to pee on. I'll never forget standing there, finally getting some relief after holding it forever, just taking in the sights and sounds of the north woods at night. The crickets and bugs buzzing, a light breeze rustling the leaves on the branches, that fresh, earthy forest smell. It was so calm and peaceful, until I heard this loud crunch of branches and leaves being trampled underfoot off in the distance behind me. I quickly zipped up and turned around to face the direction the noise was coming from. My heart already started to pick up pace. That's when I saw it emerge from the tightly packed trees and bushes maybe 40 yards away. Even from that distance, I could tell this thing was absolutely massive. As it stepped into a small clearing, the moonlight revealed the hairiest, most gigantic beast I've ever witnessed. The entire body was covered head to toe in these long, scraggly, dark brown fur that seemed to be matted together in thicker clusters, almost like you'd imagine a fossil-preserved woolly mammoth would look like. It had a relatively human-like shape as far as the bulky torso, two arms and two legs, but that's where the human similarities ended. Its face looked more like the extended snout you'd see on a wolf or bear, but even more pronounced and elongated into a terrifying canine muzzle. Two sunken black pits for eyes set deep under a heavy brow ridge. When it opened its mouth, revealing these dripping razor-sharp fangs that extended down over its lip and gnarled front teeth, I felt the first prick of sheer terror snake through me. The beast took a few thunderous steps toward me, each one shaking the ground under the sheer weight of its mass. That hair-covered head swiveled around, lupine muzzle twitching as it seemed to sniff the air searching for the source of the scent. 
the hot, muggy plumes of rotten breath pouring out its nostrils wafted across the small clearing and hit me, making me gag from the feeder. I was completely unable to move or make a sound. All I could do was remain perfectly still, hands trembling at my sides, as this unholy monster continued its slow advance, letting out these deep, guttural grunts and growls that reverberated in my chest. My mind was frantically racing. Was it a bear? No way. It was easily twice as tall and wide as the largest grizzly. Some sort of undiscovered primate species? What could this freakish, prehistoric-looking beast possibly be? That's when it stopped its approach, planting those two fur-covered trunk legs and throwing its head back unleashing a bone-chilling, deafening roar that seemed to go on and on. In that moment, whatever shred of doubt I had that this was a real creature was erased. Because there's no known animal in Michigan that could make that kind of fearsome, reverberating bellow. I don't know what finally made me snap out of my trance. The roar, the stench, the sheer overwhelming sight of the monster but I suddenly felt that frozen fear transform into sheer mind-numbing panic. I had to get out of those woods immediately if I wanted to keep breathing. Without taking my eyes off the creature, I carefully, slowly, started backing up toward my car parked on the shoulder. The beast immediately picked up on my movement, dropping back down on all fours to begin bounding toward me, each earth-shaking step closing the distance with terrifying speed. More ear-splitting roars and piercing screeches thundered from its gaping maw. I finally reached my car and flung open the door, throwing myself across both seats and slamming it shut behind me, just as the monster crashed through the brush at the tree line only about 20 yards away. I'll never forget the sight through my rear windshield as I cranked the engine and slammed the car into gear. That enormous, hair-covered beast charging toward me, Fangs gnashing, clawed paws digging into the earth, unholy growls rumbling from its throat, those beady black eyes fixed on me as prey. I hammered the gas and peeled out onto the two-lane, leaving the beast behind crashing through the woods, running parallel to the road for what seemed like forever before, finally veering off into the pre-dawn shadows of the impenetrable north wood. I've spent countless nights camping, hiking, and hunting throughout those forests my whole life, and never once came across anything remotely resembling that. That monster. No Native American legends or folk tales from the locals. Nothing to even hint at the existence of some ancient creature like what I witnessed. To this day, I don't know what it could have possibly been, unless it was the embodiment of an ancient, unholy evil that has somehow lived in the deep wilderness for centuries, and who knows what other areas it may call home, or what other unknowing people may be unlucky enough to one day cross its path. I mean, there has to be more than one of them, don't you think? I have a story that you might be interested in. It happened on a hike I went on about this time last year. It was the height of summer and I had just graduated from college. I decided to celebrate by hiking a portion of the Appalachian Trail. I've always loved hiking, but I'd never done a big through hike like the AT before. So I was going to try a section of it and see if maybe I thought I could do it. On my journey, I chose a breathtaking location that I had been eyeing since childhood. It was actually near my grandparents' home right in the heart of the Appalachian Range in Virginia. I have countless cherished memories associated with the area, and going there always feels like going on a voyage of self-discovery. I started my hike early that day. My granddad had once told me tales of an ancient forest temple hidden away in the wilderness. They were supposed to be just stories, but I couldn't help but hope to encounter some ancient relic or to unravel some monumental secret hidden away in these woods for centuries. The trail was familiar, yet everything felt fresh that day. The chirping birds were my only companions as my boots crunched along the trail. Around noon, I reached a place where the woods grew markedly denser. 
the air seemed to change, becoming colder and the light that filtered through the canopy seemed to change. I had just crossed a small stream when I noticed signs that indicated I wasn't alone. The foliage was oddly disturbed and there were foot-shaped imprints nearby that were considerably larger than any human foot I had ever seen. I remember thinking to myself in a joking manner that maybe it was Bigfoot, but of course those kinds of things don't exist. I figured it was just another person whose tracks were obscured by the mud. Traveling on, I began to find strange markings on the trees along the trail. They were an uncanny mixture of scratches that, if you looked at them hard enough, almost seemed like symbols. I began to feel a strong pull towards them, and in curiosity, chose to follow the markers. After some time, I was hiking up a more challenging portion of the trail when I heard something from the bushes to my left. A long, deep howl echoed through the woods, followed by a series of grunts. The air was suddenly filled with a distinct, nauseating scent so pungent that it tasted metallic on my tongue. I froze, instinctually reaching for my Swiss army knife. Two overlapping shadows appeared from the underbrush, and then I saw them. Two hulking figures, silhouetted against the sun, standing tall near the entrance of what appeared to be an ancient stone building, partially concealed by the overgrown vegetation. These extraordinary creatures were massive. They must have been at least eight feet tall. I could make out hints of hair covering their bodies. It was brown and reddish, a stark contrast to the deep green surrounding them. I had to squint to make out more details as I wasn't about to get any closer. Their faces were like a mixture of a human and a primate, or perhaps something along the evolution timeline. Simultaneously awestruck and terrified, I felt a surge of adrenaline pulse through me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. For a moment, we gawked at each other, suspended in this shared, surreal experience. Despite their hulking, massive frames, there was a sense of gentleness about them, at least with each other. I wasn't yet sure how they felt about me there. Their deep-set eyes regarded me closely. I think we were all just shocked to see one another. An eerie silence fell over us, broken intermittently by their grunts and heavy breaths. I took a deliberate step back and a kind of understanding passed between us. I was not there to intrude or harm them and their sacred place. They didn't take their eyes off me as I made my way back to the trail, but they didn't try to harm me either. I left their area as I had found it, and thankfully they let me be. I began my journey back with a racing heart in mind. In the weeks, months, and now years since my experience, I have thought often about those creatures and their secret place. My quiet corner of Virginia, once a place of simple, natural beauty and childhood nostalgia, now held a reality that was hard to grapple with. The initial fear I felt moved to curiosity. How many of those creatures are out there right now? They must have been intelligent enough to build that place for themselves. And somehow, they have managed to keep themselves secret out there in the wild. I haven't gone back to the same trail since. I tell myself it's out of respect for those creatures and their need for seclusion. But in truth, I'm afraid of what might happen if I saw them again. Would we come to the same understanding or perhaps they would take a different approach to keep me away? I'll never know and honestly, I don't think I want to find out. I'm content knowing that there is an unsolvable mystery out there and it looks like it's going to remain that way for the near future. This isn't a tale I share often as it is met with disbelief on just about every occasion, but I figure if anyone else out there had an experience with these things, I just want you to know that you're not alone. I remember it vividly. It was a hot summer day in Canyonlands National Park, smack dab in the middle of beautiful Utah. I've been a park ranger here for about 15 years. I've seen it all, or at least that's what I thought at the time. Every day out here is different, and that's why I love my job. 
whether it's helping lost visitors tending to routine park maintenance or dealing with a pesky animal, there's never a dull moment. On this day, the red rocks were glowing in the afternoon sun. The dry heat snuck up on you real quick, but I didn't mind. There was something about the vast emptiness of the desert and the seemingly never-ending sky that I enjoyed, despite the sometimes intense weather we experienced. I was making my regular rounds, checking trails for safety hazards, and answering a few quick questions from overwhelmed tourists. I've met people from all walks of life who come to explore and lose themselves in the wilderness. I mean, the solitude out here is breathtaking, but it sure comes with its share of risks and uncertainties. That afternoon, things took a strange turn when I got a call about some unusual activity out on the Chesler Park Trail. No other details were given. I responded expecting to find perhaps an overly adventurous tourist in a bind or an injured animal. I tried not to get ahead of myself. I would see what it was when I got there. People often let their imaginations run wild in these vast landscapes, but for me, it was just another day tackling the unexpected. As I got closer, I felt something strange. It was that same feeling you get when you're walking alone at night and you hear a suspicious sound and the hair on the back of your neck stands up. Yeah, that was it. I faced bears, mountain lions, even stumbled upon a rattlesnake taking a nap on a trail once. But none of those encounters ever made me feel like this. As I approached the area, an odd smell drifted by. It was kind of like sulfur mixed with rotting garbage that had been left out in the sun for days. And that's putting it mildly. It was bad. I know what skunks smell like, and this definitely wasn't one. It was unlike anything I'd encountered before. The radio crackled, shaking me out of the daze the smell had brought upon me. Another park ranger confirmed that they'd gotten similar reports from different parts of the park. Apparently, it wasn't just a joke. An unease crept in as the setting sun cast long shadows across the landscape. There was a silence in the air. Something rare even for the solitude of Canyonlands. I shrugged it off and continued my search, and yet I couldn't deny my growing sense of unease. Little did I know, this was just the beginning. Pushing past the nearby foliage, I found myself in a clearing surrounded by large, discolored patches where the vegetation had withered, as if burned. Navigating my way over the affected plants, the stench became more potent, if that were even possible. An eerie silence loomed overhead, making me feel like a trespasser in my own park. Suddenly, I heard a rustle from a clump of undergrowth nearby. Preparing myself for the worst, I inched closer to the disturbance when I saw them. There were three, maybe four of them, small. Maybe four and a half feet tall, their bodies were lean, almost skeletal. They were naked and their skin ashen, as if they were covered in a layer of dirt. Their heads were unproportionately larger than their bodies. Their faces filled with black oval eyes, but they didn't seem to have any other features. No nose, no mouth. Just plain blank. Except for the eyes. They were captivating, and horrifyingly so. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. My mind screamed to run, yet my feet seemed embedded in the desert sand. Their eyes seemed to bore into mine, probing, interrogating, like they were searching for something. I could almost hear whispers in my head, distorted voices that seemed icy and distant. Telepathy? Maybe. Or maybe it was just my own fear talking. My chest tightened, overcome with absolute terror and shock. I was no longer at the top of the food chain, a toy in the playground of the greater unknown. Suddenly, one of them jolted its head with an incomprehensible speed towards the sky. A streak of blinding light shot past us, followed by a gust of wind so powerful it brought me down to my knees. When the dust cleared, they were gone. I was alone in the clearing. There was no evidence from my strange encounter, save for the tainted plants below me. I trudged back to the base in a daze, every rustle, every wind howl playing mind games. After the encounter, my nights filled with dreams of black-eyed beings. Were they trying to contact me that way? Or was my mind just trying to process what it had seen? I had touched a world beyond my comprehension, a living nightmare that no one else would believe. Days turned into weeks, then months. I found no other traces of the creatures, no other reports. 
the desert and its creatures moved on as if nothing happened. Just another day in their existence. I grew up in a mobile home park. Many of the kids hung out around the neighborhood. So many of us made friends with each other. I had started dating one of my friends that lived down the street. We had known each other for a while, so I knew his family pretty well. His whole family was going on a trip to Florida for a week of vacation, and his mom had asked me if I'd be willing to watch their house. She said that the only thing I really had to do was bring the animals in at night. They had cats and dogs. And I was also supposed to turn the bathroom light and kitchen sink light on so it would give the impression that someone was home. She even said that I was welcome to bring our other friend with me to help and that we could hang out, watch cable TV, drink sodas, and eat whatever we found in the fridge. Being a teenager in the 90s, I said I'd absolutely love to do it. We didn't have cable at our house, and I thought it would be really cool to have a week or so to watch all the TV that I wanted, as was agreed that I'd bring our other friend with me to help bring in all the animals. Their cats had recently had a new litter of kittens, and they all liked to hang out under the skirting of the house so we'd basically have to crawl under the house to get them. It wasn't fun, but it was a job. One night in particular, we went to the house. It was already getting pretty dark, but we didn't have anywhere to be, so we took our time relaxing. We were hanging out, watching TV, drinking some colas, and I noticed that in one of the bedrooms down the hall, there seemed to be something peeking out from behind the door. I kept seeing the flickering of a shadow. I didn't think anything of it at first so I just kept watching TV with my friend. Several minutes go by, but then I started hearing this weird noise coming from that same room. I told my friend that I was going to go and check if one of the animals was in there messing with things. I got up, walked past my friend, and down the hall. I turned on the light. I noticed immediately that it wasn't a pet making the noise, but rather a toy. My boyfriend had a younger sibling, a sister and the room that this was happening in was hers. The toy was a wind-up toy. I was familiar with it because I'd seen his sister playing with it before. It had some little penguin figurines that would climb up this small mountain and slide back down. As I'm looking at this toy, and I'm watching the penguins climb up and slide down, I'm wondering what could have made it go off. I know that weird electrical surges like lighting can set of a toy, but it wasn't even raining outside. The toy was unusual in that it had to be wound up before it would be activated. So it was a little weird that the toy would wind up on its own and start making a ruckus out of nowhere. I didn't really know what to do or what to think. So I went back into the living room and started watching TV again. But it wasn't long after that, I felt that I noticed something peeking out from behind the door again. This time I got a better glimpse. It looked like a shadowy figure. It was standing straight up, and I could see part of a leg going up to a hand and arm, part of a neck, and part of the head showing itself for a brief second before it would hide itself again. I was really considering if I was going crazy. I asked my friend if she saw it. She said that she hadn't. It was starting to weird me out at this point. But what could I do? So I tried to shake off the fear that I had. But then it happened again. This time my friend shouted, I saw it. What was that thing? I told her I didn't know, but that I had seen it multiple times at this point. Something from inside that room was messing with us. I said that I was not feeling comfortable at all about this. Neither was my friend. So I said, let's get the cats inside the house so we can get out of here. My friend agreed. She didn't want to be there anymore either. I really didn't want to go down that hallway again. But, of course, the bathroom was down that hallway, and I had to turn the light on before we left. That was one of the main requests that the family had. So I decided I'd do it first, before we started to get the cats in from outside. So now the light in the bathroom is on, and we go outside and start bringing all the cats in, and the dog, too, who was on his chain. But when we came in with the final group of cats, the bathroom light was now off. My friend said, Hey! I thought you turned on the bathroom light. I said, I did. We are really freaked out now. So I run down the hall, turn the light back on, we close and lock the door, and we run out towards the street. 
By the time that we left, I was shaking, and so was my friend. We had a hill that we would wall up to cut through the park and get to my house quicker. So as we are walking up the hill, I decided to look back at the house and make sure the bathroom light was still on. You know, just in case. Both my friend and I could see the bathroom light was still on, but we also noticed something else. It looked like the silhouette of a man slowly standing up and peeking out the window, looking back and forth, left to right. It was like he was looking for us. We turned and looked up the hill towards the park and ran as fast as we could until we got to my house. To this day, my friend refuses to talk about the incident at all. I think she's trying to bury it. I'm not sure what exactly was going on with that house, but it was definitely something that I don't ever want to experience again. And from that day forward until they got home, I always brought my mom with me to close up their house. Cable could wait. It wasn't worth hanging out in that house ever again.